Welcome back to the eBay shed. Uh, so, I sold this little mallard duck right here, Homco 1984. I sell a lot of these Homco figurines. I find a lot of them around here. Uh, sold them for 20 bucks plus shipping. Not the biggest sale or anything, but I was sitting here packing it up and I went to stick it in a box and I smacked the wing up here on the cabinet and it just snapped the wing off. Uh, so I messaged the buyer and apologized, obviously, sent them a full refund, told them I would ship it to them broken if they really wanted it, you know, if they wanted to try to super glue it. Uh, they told me no, just to keep it. So I'm actually super gluing it back together. And then uh, it, you can see better here that it broke. Can I focus? There we go. Uh, so it's a little bit noticeable there. I don't know. I might relist it and just disclose that it's broken, but I'm going to like stress test it after it dries and uh, see if it'll even, you know, see if I even think it'll withstand shipping because might not be worth it. I, but I, I'm wondering if you can sell ceramics and stuff like broken as is. I, I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I might just trash it. We'll see. Anyways, um, so I just listened to a couple things. Uh, shout out to Neon Pink Icon. She hit me up on Instagram and said that she had some stuff that she was just gonna throw away unless I wanted it. And so she shipped me this Donkey Kong 64 strategy guide. I haven't looked it up yet, but I'm sure it's worth a little bit on its own. And then she had some instruction manuals for some Nintendo games that I just threw over there on the shelf. And then if I come across the games, then I have them to add to the listings, which is cool. And then uh, I'm listing this and this camera and these games and uh, all this down here is what you call retail arbitrage whenever you go and buy stuff from retail stores for flipping on eBay. So that's what I'm working on now. Uh, nothing real exciting. There's some like cell phone accessories. You can see they're like 50 cents. It, no, you can't because my phone won't focus. There we go. I'm gonna bundle two of these together because there's different types. Uh, just a bunch of random stuff. Some some good stuff, some not so good stuff. Bunch of Paw Patrol plush. These were like seven bucks a piece, but surprisingly they're going for like 25. I don't know if that's because they got canceled or what. Um, but, and this is only like a quarter of it. We went, basically we went to every uh, clearance store that we could think of. Not store, but we went to Walmarts and stuff like that and hit up the clearance aisles of every store that we knew has decent clearance aisles. And uh, spent like $600 yesterday on retail uh, items that hopefully we'll be able to flip. So I I'm going for a real hard push. If you guys remember, my goal for the year before all the craziness of lockdown and everything was $50,000 in sales. Now I looked, I was uh, going through the numbers the other day and for 2020 up until June 18th, I was at $37,741 gross sales, uh, net 25,000 and some change. So I'm doing really good on, um, on my goals, mostly due to all the dumbbells and the craziness that happened. But uh, I'm doing good on that goal, but I've got a new goal for myself. Let's see. I can pull it up on my phone. I've got a new goal for myself that by the 1st of October, one second, pulling it up. Uh, as you can see right now, if I can get it to focus, I have 704 active listings. I'm trying to get a thousand active listings by October 1st, going into quarter four, I wanna have a thousand active listings. Last year, I didn't list too much during quarter four, but I sold a lot. And I think if I keep listing more actively this year and just the more I have listed already going into Q4, you know, the better the Q4 is gonna be, obviously. So that's my goal. Um, so that's one of the reasons I went out yesterday. I've still, I showed you guys all the craziness that I've got coming in from the yard sales and how there's just piles of it everywhere that I'm behind on. And then I added all this retail, uh, all these retail items that are gonna help me get my numbers up before Q4. So yeah, that's what's going on. I'll show you guys the next thing. All right, so I have a big box, just a giant box with a PS1 in it and some games and a couple uh, guitar controllers, a drum set, a box of VHS tapes, this bad boy, and look at this, a sealed package of Pokemon second edition cards from 1999. 
this right here is 60 bucks alone. So I got all that stuff for 50, $55, I think, something like that. And uh, I just dug through the entire box. It was a lot of cleaning uh, and stuff like that. Like I threw away two, two Xbox 360 controllers that had like joysticks that were chewed off. Uh, this one works fine, so that's like a $20 free ship, I think. There was a couple PS1 controllers in there. Uh, unfortunately, the PS1, I got it all cleaned up and everything. The open button was sticky, and I got that fixed up and all. And it powers up, but it does not want to read discs, so I think I'm only going to get like 10 15 bucks out of that, selling it as is for parts. But there was a pretty decent stash of games, so I'll show you guys these real quick. Let's go through them. We got... Crash 2, Croc 2, Castlevania, Driver, uh, Sony PlayStation Magazine demo discs. This one actually has Tony Hawk Pro Skater on it, which is pretty cool. Spyro uh, Enter the Dragonfly, Zelda Twilight uh, Princess, another demo disc, Rock Band, Gex on the old long box PS1s, which I think I've only come across one of these like twice. Uh, this is pretty cool. ATV Off-Road Fury demo, de demo disc on PS2, not for resale, sealed. Sealed demo disc. I might just, I looked them up, they're not really worth anything. They go for like six bucks free ship. So I think I might just keep that on a shelf or something just because it's cool as a collector's item. This game actually isn't in there, unfortunately. The instructions are though, so I might try to sell just the case and the, and the uh, instructions for you know somebody that has the disc. <laughs> Uh, Castlevania Lament of Innocence, Bujeng, Bujingai, PS2, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and that's one stack. And then the other stack here, we've got Spyro the Dragon, uh, unfortunately like the outside, like that's the instruction manual, but the cover art is missing obviously, which kind of sucks, but not too big of a deal. Spyro Year of the Dragon. Monopoly, Darkstone, Forsaken, Pitfall 3D, and Heart of Darkness. So overall, I mean, considering that pack of Pokemon cards was in that in that deal, you know, technically, I made profit just off of that. Like I said, that's a $60 pack of cards uh, alone. I think both of the guitars are like maybe $30 each-ish, something like that. Um, and then all this stuff, you know, I think I did pretty good. So, uh, yeah, now I got to get to listing it all. All right, guys, just got back from a quick pickup. I wanted to show you guys this stuff really quick. These are the kind of trips in a town that I love. Anytime I'm in town, uh, if I haven't recently, I try to check out uh, Salvation Army and the Open Door Thrift Store. Um, literally bought four items today while I was... Uh, at these two stores and made really good money. So let me go over it real quick. So the first find here was a little handy cam, JVC digital video camera, super high band processor. I believe we looked that up and it's a little over, probably it, the remote is in here as long as, as well as the charger and stuff. Uh, so these things don't always come with a remote, obviously. So I should be able to get like 125, 130 for this. Paid 20 for that. Uh, paid 25 for this. This is a brother brand. Um, it's called Scan and Cut. And if you look these up, we saw some crazy listings anywhere from, what was the lowest? 200 or 300? Uh, 200. 200 was the lowest we saw, but some of them were like up around 300, 400. So I don't really know. I have no idea what's in this box, um, but got this for 25. Um, then I found this clock and this clock saw some listings going for like 160, 200, 250, something like that too. And it's 25 bucks. Um, so like just between those three items, you know, some pretty, pretty good money. Then I found Simpson sit and run the platinum hits version. And I went ahead and looked it up, even though their price is ridiculous. Look at that, $8. Um, but I looked it up, and surprisingly, even the Platinum Hits version of this game still goes for like 25 bucks. So uh, I actually talked them down. I paid 5 bucks for this, so not too bad. It does have uh, the instructions as well, so it can be listed as complete. So just between those four items that I picked up at the thrift stores, I did really, really good today. Spent, what, 50 70 
75 dollars 75 bucks should be able to turn it into like at least 300 if not 400 um so pretty good there and then i picked this up this was a facebook buy i won this on auction for a dollar and this was another surprising one even um just the disc tony hawk's american wasteland i think is like a ten dollar bill um free ship you know but ten bucks still so for a dollar why not so that's the haul all right guys so a first for me in the ebay business i had my first attempt of a scam on one of my sold listings here so uh the return request i sold this pair of their penny loafers they sold for 30 or 40 dollars i can't remember um exactly what it was but i got a return request late last night that said uh that there was some fraying they said the, the way that they phrased it was fraying. Uh, the, they said the top of the shoes are frayed and they were like new with tags that you put on question mark, like implying that I took tags from brand new shoes and put them on used shoes to sell these guys. Um, and I couldn't decline it right away. The only thing I could do was uh, accept the return or offer a partial refund or message the seller back. I, or the buyer, excuse me. I decided to just wait because um, the eBay's hotline was already closed for the night and I decided to wait until this morning and I would call first thing because these guys clearly already had a pair of these and they went and bought a brand new pair, my pair, and then tried to send photos of their old worn out, uh, old worn out shoes and try to return those to get a free new pair. And uh, homie don't play that. I uh, At first I was like, okay, this is probably going to be somebody, you know, with like hardly any feedback and, uh, you know, a brand new account just to try to scam people. But it kind of worried me because I looked up their account. They had like almost 300 feedback uh, and been a member since like 2014. So I guess they just got a wild hair in their ass and decided to, you know, start trying to scumbag people. So anyways, I'll show you their photos right here. As you can see, there's a big like chunk of leather missing there. And then on the next one, this is the one to really pay attention to. This is the this is the the one that really made me realize, okay, these are two clearly different pair of shoes. So you've got the one there on the heel, and then another one on the side, another one on the side. And then here's the shoes that I sold them. Brand new, crispy, new with tags, penny loafers. And here are my heels. Huh. Look at that. Neither one of those heels has anything close to resembling that. Also, it's kind of ironic how in none of these photos you can see the tags that were on my pair of shoes, as seen in this photo and the other photos. Um, so yeah, clearly, I mean, look, they still have the cardboard down in the toes. Like, what are you trying to do, man? So I was a little worried about it, but, uh, I'm happy to say that whenever I called eBay, they were very supportive, and he just was immediately, he was like, yeah, these are clearly pictures of two different pairs of shoes. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and close this case in your favor. So, yeah, uh, you know, again, I was kind of worried about it. I've heard of people doing stuff like this with clothes and everything, you know, they'll just order one, order new on eBay, and then try to return their old worn out stuff. Um, this is why it's important, guys, to, to not only have an upstanding, you know, a good history with eBay. You need to have lots of solds. You need to have lots of uh, reputation and feedback uh, and prove that you're a legitimate, trustworthy seller. That obviously helped my case a lot, I'm sure. But also take as many photos as you can of everything that you list because whenever people send stuff in like this, you can be like, okay, clearly we're not talking about the same shoe here you know like i would have never bought anything that looked like that why would i why would i ever buy a shoe that looks like that to resell i i just wouldn't you know i will buy shoes that look like this so anyways guys that's my first attempted scam on ebay and luckily ebay saw uh you know that i was being a legitimate seller and doing everything i can to uh you know do the right thing and they also did the right thing. So they closed the case and they actually did also make sure, I made sure before I got off the phone, uh, I've had a couple cases get closed like this. Whenever they close a case in my behalf, um, 
the buyer is not able to leave bad feedback on my account either because that's always my worry is like oh they lost you know they're they're trying to scam me and ebay favored on my side so now they're going to be pissed off and they're just going to leave bogus bad feedback on my account which would hurt my account uh but they can't do that so anyways yeah that's what's going on guys i've uh as you can see i'm doing some listings i don't know if i've ever like addressed that but i i do 99.99999999% of my listings. Very rarely do I ever do one on the computer. I do them all on my phone. I take the photos on my phone, I list on my phone, and uh, that's just how I do it. But I've got some stuff here that I'm getting listed, like this crazy robotic dog, brand new sealed in the package, and just some other random stuff. That little stack of games there and everything. I'm actually about to go eat lunch. So anyways, love you guys. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I hope you do enjoy them. If you do, show the video some love, and I will see you on the next one. All right.